All right, well, let's get into this, man. Since we talked last, the MLB draft as the scouting director, you know all about these, going through, making your picks, and we're going to talk about the Cubs draft and and, and kind of go through it. Uh, it's only 20 rounds. It's not like it used to be. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's 20 rounds. You know the scouts involved in this, some of the guys. And um, the first pick is a former Terp. I spent some time as a Terp, so uh, it was really cool to see Matt Shaw uh, selected by the Cubs, their first-round pick, 13th overall. A shortstop with some pop. Good position to take a guy because you can do a lot with shortstops. Uh, no doubt, and uh, a lot of uh, people subscribe to the theory of uh, the middle part of the of the park and uh, how much it can do for you. And you know, you can only play one shortstop at a time, as you know. But uh, a lot of those guys kind of fan out to other positions, and uh, I, I've always thought it was if. If it works and it fits and the guy is up at the top of your list, it's always good to get the middle of the field player. Jackson Wiggins was their second round pick, a pitcher out of Arkansas, a right-hander. Josh Rivera, a shortstop out of Florida. So they took another shortstop with their third pick, and he had an excellent year for the Gators who came in second to South Carolina. I'm mean, excuse me, to um, LSU for the SEC championship. Uh, the national championship, I guess the SEC Invitational. Uh, Will <laughs> Sanders, a right-hander from South Carolina, fourth pick. And then uh, Michael Carrico, a catcher out of Davidson with their fifth pick. So um, two pitchers, two shortstops, and a catcher with their first five picks. And they've done a good job. I think they've signed most of these guys of the 20. Yeah, I, I think I saw where they they least have – 12 signed and uh more than was, that now you know pretty balanced draft um uh, they had uh, i think they took a total of six infielders nine pitchers and uh, uh, it's uh pretty well balanced as far as players versus pitchers yeah, talk about your feelings of this draft, guys that you know that were involved in it, and you know your overall thoughts of what the Cubs were able to do on draft day. Well, first of all, I want to uh, throw off, uh, throw out there a congratulations to Billy Schwope, who lives in uh, the Norfolk, Virginia area, and Billy has been a scout for the Chicago Cubs for 31 years. And during that time period, Billy had uh, signed 25 major leaguers, uh, 21 of them via the draft and four after the draft. And in 31 years, he had never had a first-round pick until he got Matt Shaw in this draft. So I thought that was really neat for him. Uh, like I said, he had seven players he had in this draft, so he roughly had 35% of the Cubs draft this year. And it was, uh, we always used to say in the draft room, this is the scouts' Christmas day. And boy, did Billy have a hang of a Christmas uh, this past draft. And uh, he, uh, Billy, uh, had signed guys that you're probably familiar with, Sean Marshall out of Virginia uh, oh, VCU. Oh, big smooth, big smooth. Yeah, Brendan Harris, who did most of his work with uh, Minnesota and Tampa. I guess he, one year he hit 286 with 12 homers and 59 RBIs, played parts of eight years. Brandon Geyer, who was uh, – played in the major leagues for parts of seven years, mostly with the Rays and the Indians and had a pretty good world series uh, with some big hits in 2016 for the Indians. Uh, the one undrafted guy that he got, and I don't know if you're real familiar with him, his name's Clay Rapata and he's out of the, yeah, I remember yeah, he, yeah he was out of the MEAC conference from Virginia state and, uh, he had one year with the Yankees, I believe it was in 2012, where he pitched in 70 games and his ERA was 2.82. So, 
And then Justin Bohr, who played for the Florida Marlins out of George Mason and had a really good year in 2017 where he hit 25 homers and 89 RBIs and hit 289. But uh, uh, being in the game for 30 years prior and never uh, really sniffing a number one or coming close to it, and he finally gets his first first rounder. So uh, just wanted to pay tribute to Billy, and uh, he's – been with the Cubs for 31 years, like I mentioned, and uh, he, he just loved it. And in this particular draft, I uh, gave him a call the other day to congratulate him, and he couldn't stop talking about the 11th rounder opposed to four or five guys before that, including Shaw, and it's a high school kid named Sire Hope out of a uh, Colonial Forge, uh, Virginia, and uh, uh, he was just ecstatic, as you can imagine, getting seven players out of the 20 drafts, so uh, hopefully some of those guys turn out to be big leaguers one day, and uh, congratulations to Billy. Look, I didn't know much about Billy, but I, you know, you and I kind of doing our pre-show talk about it. I said, well, he's got to have some kind of connection to Old Dominion because it, the Cubs just always seem to have someone from Old Dominion. Every draft I look in there and then, you know, you, you're talking about uh, uh, P.J. Higgins, who just got traded back to the Cubs, who came up through the system. Right. And, and a yeah. big league catcher, kind of a. Uh, not as much a catcher as a utility guy, but can catch and can hit. So it's good to see him. And um, Jared Young, who has you know been to the big leagues this season. And um, uh, Connor Myers, who's not playing baseball anymore, but was a really fun outfielder to watch. Um, and, and you were like, yeah, it's like right in his backyard. So I, I figured that, you know what, that had to be a, the, there had to be a connection there. Yeah, I had the pleasure of working with Billy. Uh from 2006 to 2015 and uh, uh, just a big energy guy and a good baseball man. I'll tell you a quick little story. Uh, Billy played outfield in the Dodgers system back in the day. Did he play and, with, uh, Tom, with uh, uh, Tom Byers by any chance? Uh, he possibly did. Tom's here, by the way. It's oh, he is? <laughs> oh, he's coaching. I saw, okay. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. Oh, good for Tom. Tell him I said hello. I will. And uh, the story is about Billy Schwope, was, like I said, was an outfielder, and they wanted to convert him to catcher. Well, he had a teammate that was a catcher, and they wanted to convert him to a pitcher. So that player's – that became the pitcher. Uh, it was his first game as a pitcher. It was Billy Schwope's first game as a catcher, and it was Dave Stewart. <laughs> and, and I'm at a ball game in North Carolina, and Dave Stewart gives me a holler, and I'm on the phone, and Schwope was talking to me, and I said, hold on, Schwope, I'll, I'll get right to you. And Dave Stewart says, is that Bill and Schwab? He says, give him the damn phone. I want to talk to him. <laughs> so a little bit of a Dodger trivia when uh, Dave Stewart started with the Dodgers and, and Schwopey was uh, in the organization as well. The, this year's Old Dominion pick was uh, Sam Armstrong, a, a right-handed pitcher in the, the 13th round. Yeah. He's he's got a lock on that Norfolk area. So. <laughs> Old Dominion, pretty pretty good baseball program. So two of the two of the guys, two of the three guys already to the big leagues, which is pretty good. And, and Jared Young's had a very decent year um, in the minor leagues, and then got a chance to go to the major leagues. Uh, so overall thoughts of the Cubs draft, and then the draft in general this year. Well, uh, I. It looks to me overall, pitching-wise, uh, that it wasn't a, a real great year. And you were seeing clubs drafting pitchers in the second and the third round that had limited amount of time on the mound because of arm problems and blah, blah, blah. And I, I think 
clubs were taking those guys because they had seen them in the past and there was some sightings of being a pretty good pitcher, but it was more of guesswork than uh, what has been in drafts of years past. So that would but, kind of well, – hold on. That would kind of qualify with Wiggins, right, because he's been injured yeah. and he's coming back from Tommy John surgery, which – it's a little bit of a risk, but guys normally come back. Some even throwing harder. And what you're saying is, is that it was a good pick in the second round because when the guy was healthy, he helped lead Arkansas to the World Series, and you know what he can do. He just hasn't been healthy. Maybe that's how, that with the amount of pitching that's not there this year, that you you would take someone that's injured and on the mend because you could get a better value. There's a bigger upside. Yeah, no doubt. And like I said, with the thinness of. Uh quality pitchers in the draft uh, I, I know it's a little bit of guesswork and hoping that that uh, Wiggins does come back and uh, uh, return to form or so to say but uh, the, 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 there was a premium on middle infielders middle of the field players and there was a fair amount of those guys I think there was uh, on day one there was 14 shortstops taken so it's quite unusual uh, to see that that many. I mean, there's generally quite a few, but a little bit more than normal. So that's crazy. So, so how do you uh, grade this draft? Well, I think it's it's going to be, uh, and I'm not I'm not running away from it, but at the same time, it, it, you're just going to have to see how it plays out, but. Uh, I think they were right in line with, you know, I'm just guessing top top 15. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, that's right in the middle. But, um, you know, you just have to see how it plays out. And, mm -hmm. and well, the, I, you I know, think, go right, ahead. I think Sam Hughes has said it to me before. You always feel like you won the draft. Uh, the day after draft day, right? <laughs> yeah. How long down the line do you look back and go, okay, we killed this? I mean, if if you have one of the first couple picks, you're 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 going to have one of the first couple picks all the way down the line. That was something that Russ Nixon told me my first pro job when I used to sit in his office every day, the mm -hmm. former manager for the Braves and the Reds, and a guy that taught me a lot about baseball. And he said, hey, you know, you, you play some of these other organizations that weren't very good and they had all these really good players. And he's like, Mick, it's not just that you have the first pick and, you know, the Cubs have the 15th pick and whoever won the World Series has the last pick. It's that every single round. He said, so, you know, their second round pick technically could be considered a first round pick. Right. And then the third round pick, you know, you're waiting around. And so it, just by what's available you would figure that the teams at the top of the draft would would do better, right? You would hope so, and that's not always the case. Uh, I mean, uh, there's many examples I could probably give you where teams were picking toward the end and having really good success. And, and just of recent times, uh, I think it was a 2017 or 20, 2017 draft, I believe, the Dodgers uh, picking toward the end ended up, I think they've had 14 guys get to the big leagues from one draft. Mm -hmm. And uh, naturally not all those guys have played the whole time, but uh, that's, that's, that's a pretty damn good accomplishment. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, well, final thoughts on the Cubs draft. Anything else that you want to throw in there? Um, well, other than you. Other than what Billy Schwope was saying about their 11th round, I mean, he was ecstatic. And I said, Schwope, if I, if I gave you the, uh, the whole thing to go ahead and say, here's the draft, where would you take in your 11th rounder? Well, he was so excited. And he said, I probably would have taken him somewhere between the second and the fourth round. Wow. So I don't, know, I don't know if signability – was an issue, and that's why he dropped down to number, their 11th pick, or, you know, there's something else that went into it. He said there wasn't a lot of action on the player till a little bit later, right before the draft. Clubs aren't as quick to pull the trigger. 
if they hadn't had enough looks. So, right. right. What uh, was it like when you would go through this? How, how intense are the debates over players and having a draft pick? And how tough is it for scouts to get their picks, the guys that they liked picked? Well, I mean, you're one of 30, like you mentioned earlier. So that's going to be tough in itself. But uh, um, it, it, naturally, it's a lot different. Uh, when I first started, it was unlimited. Clubs were taking 60, 70, 80 drafts, not signing all of them, but they would take that many drafts. And then it, it went down to 50 and then eventually 40. And now we're here at 20 because we don't have as many minor league clubs to fill. So um, it, it's it's got quite different. And actually, analytics has uh, come into play here a little bit. And uh, so it, it's not quite the way it was back then, but uh, it, it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we fairly intense and like Sam Hughes you mentioned the comment from Sam Hughes, and we would finish with our 50th round pick and turn the speaker off and go, yeah, the Cubs won that draft. <laughs> so, but, but, you know, it, it probably – you probably won't know the fruits of those drafts till about about your fifth year you start saying, oh, okay, this looks pretty good or – and I don't think we did as good as I thought we were going to do. But you did bring up a good point about the clubs that are picking higher should have the better of the drafts, but that's not always the case. And just like I told you with the Dodgers, clubs toward the end can have uh, pretty good drafts as well. Right. And, and things have changed a lot, too. You, you used to be able to uh, spend as much money as you wanted to in the draft, and you know, now that it's slotted, um, you know, they've made it to where you, you, you really have to be careful with your draft picks because you're only allotted a, a certain amount of money, uh, you know, so that matters too, right? And yeah. you know, the, the first guy that got picked, you know, overall, Paul Skeens, he didn't even get $10 million. <laughs> I mean, think about that. I mean, yeah. really, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, he's the number one overall pick. And, I mean, like, he's they're saying he's like the next Strasburg and he can't miss. Uh, but, you know, back in the day, I mean, you <laughs> you, you could have – maybe somebody could have drafted him and paid him a lot of money. And some of those guys that played other sports you might buy. You know, Jeff Samarja, one of those dudes, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, those, those days are over now. Oh, they're definitely over. And it, something I noticed with a fair amount of clubs and – you could see it in their drafts. There were some high school guys that were somewhat high profile that did not sign and evidently didn't give a good signability to a lot of the clubs that were interested in thinking about taking those players. But all of a sudden you start seeing some high school guys get drafted between the 15th and 20th rounds and, and guys that were some of those higher profile high school players and they, uh, I think they took those players as a safety net in case they couldn't sign some of their higher picks, and then maybe they redirect that money to those high school players. Uh, so, one other, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was going to say ahead. one other thought on this draft is the Cubs' twenty players. I mean, most of these guys, the overwhelming majority of them, college guys, it, and it used to be high school guys and the college guys were kind of second fiddle to the high school guys you know now you got maryland arkansas florida south carolina davidson uh and then a couple of academies mm -hmm. and then minnesota long beach state temple a uh, high school with the the guy you were talking about zier hope uh in uh, colonial forge virginia and then a guy out of nc state old dominion vandy ball state campbell uh, UCLA, Gonzaga, another Maryland guy in Stanford. So really three guys that didn't play college out of the 20. Yeah. Uh, and some clubs, uh, some clubs were as high as 19 college guys and one high school guy. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's really interesting to see how it played out. I think uh, the Milwaukee Brewers were the only ones that, 
they took 10 high school players wow. and nine college players in the Detroit Tigers took nine high school players. So they were the two top high school drafting right. teams. Is, is the reason why is that we got rid of all the, the rookie ball teams and now it's like a complex league or does that, is it just the, the, that the, the players are developed a little bit faster going to college. They're playing in uh, you know, a, a league that I would consider to be at least equivalent to low a ball. Well, uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I would say this, that, uh, I mean, you've got to where you want to be precise with your money. Uh, you've got to try to sign your higher picks naturally. Uh, but I think it, uh, maybe some of that NIL money that's being used at the college level is hurting somewhat. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, that. there's there's a lot of entities going into it, and uh, uh, you you definitely have to be more precise with your picks uh, up above. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. And like I said, it's you probably won't have a really good idea till at least your third or fourth year, and probably five or six. Mm, okay. All right. Well, we'll find out. That's a recap of. The Cubs draft one through 20, a lot of college guys, uh, a pitcher that was uh, coming back from Tommy John surgery, but very good before that. One of the best middle infielders, actually a couple of the best middle infielders in college this year. And it'll be interesting to see as they sign him. And I think they, they got a chance to get most of these guys signed. They already do. Um, you know, how they'll, how this will all turn out and you know, how long it'll take these guys to go up through the system. Um, I don't see any of these guys going straight to the big leagues. Paul Skeens has a chance to do that with Pittsburgh, but um, and then um, what is it? Zach Neto, like last year, was taken out of Campbell by the Angels with Ben yep. Joyce, who played at Tennessee. So they actually played each other. Ben Joyce drafted by the Angels, the guy that throws 105. And then uh, Zach Neto played for Campbell. They played each other in the regionals. They both got drafted by the Angels. They started them in double-A, which you hardly ever see, and both guys are in the big leagues. Yeah. And uh, hats off to them to recognize. And it, uh, it it didn't surprise me with Neto because he play, his overall game plays very calm, but mm-hmm. he's a, you know he's an aggressive guy. Uh, but he... He presents it or his body actions. You can see in the game that he, he's a really good baseball player, and it doesn't surprise me how well he's competed at the major league level if if he can keep healthy. And Joyce uh, has quite the arm. I got to see him against the University of Florida last year come in relief and mm. uh, explosive arm i was kind of surprised he didn't go a little bit before that so yeah well the last question on the draft is you know the cubs they take uh, you know two short stops in their first four picks uh but they just signed the short stop dansby swanson to a seven-year contract when you're the scouting director um how does that play you know if you go out and you make a big signing like that the guy that's supposed to be there forever would you draft guys in that exact same position or I don't want to seem dumb here. Or is it because they play shortstop, they could learn how to play left field, they could play second base, they could play third. So you really don't care as much about the position. If Dansby Swanson locks that thing down forever, there'll they'll be a spot for him. I think it's more the latter. And uh, there, there was a situation uh, over at Toronto when I was there where we roughly had 10 or 12 shortstops in about a two-year period, uh, not only from the draft, but from Latin America and uh, other places. And uh, we just figured they're going to find another place to play in the diamond. And because of their baseball abilities, uh, one particular year we had uh, Casey Blake, and I got yelled at by one of our scouts who signed (laughs) Casey Blake. (laughs) <laughs> he went to Wichita State, and they played on AstroTurf, and naturally Toronto played on AstroTurf. And almost right away they moved him to the third base, and the scout yells at me. He says, you saw him play on AstroTurf. He, 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 can play, he can play that turf. And I was going, 
Mark, we got like 10 shortstops. You can only put one out there at a time. You, you should consider the blessing that you put them over a third. So. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Well, uh, great conversation on the draft, and, and we'll keep an eye on that.